A corporation is a fictitious entity that has no hands, no eyes, no brain, and cannot affect any change on any flesh and blood man or woman. Only a flesh and blood man can charge you in court for an injury or breach of contract. A corporation cannot charge you, a flesh and blood man, but it can charge another corporate fictitious entity. So they had to create a corporation that would represent you and thus be able to be affected by them. The trick that is that they ask the flesh and blood man to stand in as surety for the corporation and not knowing that there is a difference between the two, we do so. I will stand in place of the fiction in court when my name is called rather than point out that it isn't my name at all. In a similar, it's a, it is a similar name, but it is in all capital letters, and that makes all the difference. I mean, when they call your name, they don't announce that it's in all capital letters, do they? Is John Doe here in the court today? And you stand up and say, here, Your Honor. So right there, you have said that you are the all capital name, which is the charge on the charging instrument. If you get a traffic ticket, it's in the all capital name. If you have a court case, it's in the all capital name. So why stand up and offer to be the surety for that name? So to gain control of the straw man, one has to understand what the straw man is, what its purpose is, and the rules of law that allow you to get your needs met. Let's go over what the straw man is once more. The straw man, i.e. John H. Doe, in all capital letters, is a vessel in maritime admiralty law, a corporate fiction, ens legis, which is defined as, quote, a creature of the law, an artificial being, quote, in Black's Law, 4th edition, ends legis. A fictional entity with no hands to sign a document, nor mouth to object to any mistreatment, and as such, cannot act, cannot drive a car, cannot sign a bank card, nor a loan application. And yet, the DMV driver's license, that bank loan, that car loan, that marriage license, that contractor's license, are all labeled with the all capital lettered name as the responsible party of interest. Why? Could it be because the real flesh and blood man or woman is sovereign and doesn't need a driver's license if not engaged in commerce? or permission to work on people's houses, which would be illegal without a license under the false legislative powers usurped by the falsely operating democracy. And in fact, a common law right to work and work in whatever one desires, as stated in the Declaration of Independence as the right to, quote, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And do we know what those are? Can we ask for them? If you don't ask for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, you surely won't get it. But you have to state what that means to you in order to get it. What requirement could possibly exist to get a state-issued and controlled marriage license? Why make the state a third party able to control your relationship, which is only between you, your spouse, and God? Could it be that it gives the state the right to possess the fruit of your union or your children? This is the straw man's function, to falsely represent you, the flesh and blood, and give the corporate government the right to control you through your straw man. The United States, in all capital letters, is the parent corporation with all other forms of government, subservient, and divisions of the parent. In other words, the state of California as a corporation is subservient to the United States corporation. The county of Sonoma is subservient to the state of California. The city of Santa Rosa is subservient to the state of California. These are all sub-corporations of the state of California, which is a sub-corporation of the United States. A corporation can have no effect lawfully on flesh and blood as it is fictional. I mean, imagine a corporation. It's like a piece of paper in a lawyer's brief sitting on the desk. Can that corporation, can that piece of paper make you do anything? No, it's a piece of paper. That is why they need to invent another fictional entity to be equal with. 
that everyone is deceived into standing in as surety the responsible party for the all caps name is testament to the failure of the community to tell each member the truth of what is going on in this Alice in Wonderland fairy tale. So what can be done about it? What can that relationship be changed? We have to understand the rules of engagement in this world. The maxims of law are that are true 100% of the time and can be questioned, can't be questioned except by tyrants and dictators who would make their arbitrary law at their whim. The first and foremost is failure to object means you agree. If you don't refuse and disagree with things that you don't agree with, you lose the right to disagree. When in court, your sworn testimony, if it is not objected to or countered, stands as true and correct. And the final word. This is very powerful information. An example would be that your credit card company falsely states that you signed for a $3,000 vacation rental in Hawaii and you didn't even go to Hawaii. If you don't complain about it and object to it, what do you think will happen? And you have to object in a timely fashion. You can't wait two years to object to it because they'll come back and say in the contract you have a certain period of time to object and that time period has elapsed. You will be charged the $3,000. You have to object. Even if you say, I don't think I did that, they will charge you. You don't have to tell a big story or even justify your reasons. Just state that it is false, and that is your sworn testimony. You would fill out an affidavit, have it notarized, and swear the statement is true. Then, then know that unless they get a sworn test affidavit by someone else stating that you signed for the vacation rental, they lose. The problem will come when they try and get someone to swear to it because the hotel concierge will not want to put his name on a document swearing it was you because he does not know you. And he knows or has reason to believe you are contesting it and will then sue him as you will have his wet ink signed affidavit as evidence. See the problem for the other side? This will be the case with government officials, bank presidents, police officers, etc., etc. No one will think lightly of swearing something is true unless that is their true experience because of the commercial liability. Or, in other words, courtroom liability that comes with giving written evidence. Another maxim of law is truth is sovereign in commerce. If in a contract one party is lying or being deceitful, then they lose in court. If you declare something to be true, it had better be true because you will become liable if it is not. If I declare my straw man is a fictitious entity, do I have to worry that he will object to that? No. If I declare that the straw man owes me everything he has acquired in his bank account, his deed of trust for real property, his title to cars, his furniture, etc., and he doesn't object, that makes it true. Will he object, or more importantly, how could he object? He's a fictitious entity with no mouth to speak. Was it not my labor and blood, sweat, and tears that purchased all those things? If I want everyone in the world to be able to know that I am the creditor and my straw man is the debtor, and owes everything in his possessions to me, how could I do that? I would put it on a UCC-1 financing statement, and that way everyone could witness the straw man John H. Doe's indebtedness to me, John H. Doe, in upper and lower case letters. What difference would that make? Well, once you do your publicly recorded UCC-1 and send it off to your Secretary of State demanding that they recognize you as the creditor and not the straw man and give them 30 days to rebut your right to do that, you will not have to answer in court for the straw man ever again. Once, they show, once you show that they defaulted on rebutting your claim of being the creditor and separate from the debtor straw man.